travelers, Mag, I, and me mom here on day 224 of our trip around the United States. Last night we made it out of Joshua Tree National Park into 29 Palms. We had enough time on our side that we could have pushed forward a few hours, but beyond here the route takes us into the desert. And had we pushed forward last night, we would have had to camp out somewhere in the desert away from everything last night. We weren't quite feeling that after a day of being away from things in Joshua Tree National Park. So instead, we bedded down right here in 29 Palms and are now ready to get our day started. We're currently at the Oasis of Mara. This is a beautiful hiking trail right behind the Joshua Tree National Park administrative offices. There's also a lot of history on the Oasis and the early native peoples that lived in this area. From here, we'll be covering 310 miles today. We'll first be pushing our way east, and today is going to be all about those DeLorme pages. So we have to go a little further east than the roads would take us to make sure that we tap them. We're not really gonna be seeing much of civilization until we hit Barstow. Between here and there, for the next 150, 200 miles or so, it's gonna be a lot of nothing and some finds along the way. After Barstow, it's gonna be a pretty big jump through the desert again, but by the end of the day, we should be coming back into some more settled areas as we're wrapping things up in Ridgecrest. I know today is going to have a lot of geocache finds ahead for us and a lot of time on the road for me, mom, and I to relax after hiking eight plus miles yesterday in Joshua Tree National Park. So let's see what the desert of the east side of California has in store for us. Come on, let's go. Our adventure for the day begins within the Oasis of Mara, located in 29 Palms. This oasis had first been settled by the Serrano, who called it Mara, meaning the place of little springs and much grass. It is said that the Serrano people came to the oasis because a medicine man told them it was a good place to live and that it would help them to bear many baby boys. The medicine man instructed them to plant a palm tree each time a baby boy was born, and in that first year, the Serrano people planted 29 palm trees within the oasis. Not only did the palms provide the people with much needed essentials, but it also created a habitat for many desert creatures. Now, whether or not that legend holds true, 29 Palms was in fact named for the palm trees found here in 1852 by Colonel Henry Washington while he was surveying the San Bernardino baseline. This little oasis in the desert is also known for its thriving art community. In addition to the 26 murals scattered about town, you can also expect to find many metal art sculptures as well. These were commissioned by local artists as nearby as Joshua Tree and Yucca Valley and as far away as Los Angeles. Although we did not spend an abundant amount of time here in 29 Palms, there was quite a bit to see before we pushed out to the edge of town and began making our way further into the desert for the day. And that would about sum up why we decided to stay in 29 Palms last night before heading off into the desert for the next series of pages we have to go after. It's gonna be a while till we see signs of civilization again. In order to reach DeLorme page 145, we need to push east along 29 Palms Highway, past the Claghorn Lakes Wilderness Area to the edge of the Sheephole Valley Wilderness Area. From there, we backtracked to Amboy Road headed north into Amboy and then pushed a little bit east out of the city limits to reach DeLorme page 133. This route ensured we stayed on the desert roads all morning long. <laughs> Ta -da! Da -da -da! The desert roads in these pages are only lonely as far as cars and other people is concerned. But as for the geocaches, there are a ton of power runs here to choose from. There it is. We have another geocache. Me mom on the move. She's got the target in sight. And the brand Could it be? Stayed. Could it be? It sure is. Another micro in the desert under a suspicious pile of rocks. I think we might have a geocache. What? Huh? Who would have thought this would be hiding there under that not so suspicious pile of rocks? For the most part, each time we hopped into a new page, we would pick a handful of geocaches out of the power run and quickly track them down. 
Every now and then, though, we would come across the opportunity for something different, and we certainly were not about to pass up on an ammo can located out here in the desert. The occasional find like this, whether an ammo can or something else unique, was a nice break from all the Power Run geocaches that we were finding all morning long. Our chosen course for the day also had us coming on and off Route 66 at various points. Route 66 begins its journey through California at Needles and winds its way through towns like Amboy, Baghdad, and Barstow before finally making it over to the coast in Santa Monica. The opening of Interstate 40 drove all traffic away from Route 66 almost overnight. This meant that all of the towns along the route that relied on tourism saw their sources of income dry up in no time at all. What you see instead in several of these places are living ghost towns. Places where you can find many hints of signs of towns that have seen better days and purchase the occasional souvenir or coke before moving on down the road. One geographical feature that you are sure not to be able to miss in this area is the Amboy Crater, a dormant cinder cone volcano that rises above a 27 square mile lava field in the eastern Mojave Desert. The cinder cone is estimated to be about 80,000 years old with the most recent eruption about 10,000 years ago. This had proven to be a very popular stop along Route 66 during its heyday as this is one of just a few extinct volcanoes that can be found along the entire route. After checking out all the touristy sites, we decided to take on our biggest adventure for the day, which would require us to traverse some pretty hairy roads to get to the place we wanted to be. We simply could not resist. On my target list, I had a 2002 very old geocache located at a confluence. I really enjoy confluence geocaches, and for those who do not know what they are, that is where the grid coordinates come to a meeting point. So, for example, in Florida, if you went to one of the confluences near Jacksonville, it might be something like North 30, 00, .00 West 081, 00.00. .00. So we were able to get within about a mile of the geocache on the drivable roads. And from there, we did a little bit of four by fouring to get out here. And now it's only what, third of a mile walk? Yep, easy peasy. So we're gonna go make this thing happen. And it gives us a little midday exercise too. When you are out on a geocaching adventure and it's just you, your friend, your ride, and no people in sight, sometimes decisions have to be made about how far you're willing to drive down risky conditions to get to where you need to be. Many of the previous finders had indicated they'd gotten to within about a thousand feet of this geocache. And while we got pretty close at about a third of a mile, we both felt like any closer was just too close for the risk we had to assume. We were all three very happy with how close we had made it and enjoyed the short walk out to the desert to get to this rather unique geocache location. And, as we have already established, there is very few things that give us more satisfaction than popping open the top of an ammo can and checking out the contents of a fully stocked geocache just waiting for finders to come across it. There it is. We have a confluence cache and an old. This is just that sweet spot feeling for a geocache today, isn't it? It's a double. How many zeros are in the confluence? All zeros. All zeros, that's right. <laughs> which is why it's hidden where it is, because they made the hiding spot work to be at the exact coordinates. That kind of makes this so much better. Having completed one of our major goals for the day in tracking down the Confluence geocache, we found our sunlight quickly beginning to fade behind us. But with still a little bit of daylight left on our side, we enjoyed the sights that we had in front of us, making our way through Barstow toward Boron. As the home of Marine Corps Logistics Base Barstow, it was little surprise to find so many of these Marine Corps signs on this structure not too far outside the edge of town. By the time we reached the city of Boron, that light was almost entirely gone. While we enjoyed the gorgeous sunset, painting the desert landscape a brilliant orange, we checked out a few of the aircraft parked outside of the Boron Aerospace Museum. A couple of the pieces of information we needed to complete the virtual were located here, while the rest were across the street in Pioneer Park. While we did not have time for much here, we did learn that Boron is the borax capital of the world, named so as the site of the world's largest source of boric acid. 
All right, travelers, that is going to do it for our day. We have made it to Boron, the Borax capital of the world. And what better way to be able to celebrate that than with some of these big trucks that help make that happen. We have pretty much been in the desert all day long. All day long. Once we left 29 Palms, it was pretty much exactly what I'd expected and what we talked about last night. We were just gonna be driving through the desert nonstop. And I'm glad that we waited till the daylight to do it because it turned out it was beautiful views. As you're coming in out of the mountains, You'll be dropping into a valley and you'll have a mountain spread out in front of you and you'll be driving toward it for 30 40 minutes and sometimes it doesn't feel like it's gotten any closer but the view has been splendid the whole way through we are still about two pages shy from being able to finish our night which is in good time for schedule but not in good time for sunlight so we are going to push through through the night and get ourselves through Ridgecrest and Trona and that's where we're going to stop and be ready to take on the miles we have in front of us tomorrow thank you guys for joining us on this tour of the desert we've actually had a pretty good time after all the hiking that we've done it was nice to have a road day like that too like this video subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates and we'll see you out on the trails